I'm Stephen Brooks, I'm the Rubber Onion, and I'm welcoming you to a kind of lost episode of uh, the podcast. Rob Yulfo, my co-host, is not here during this intro because there's no intro. We didn't record an intro. We talked about it in the beginning, we totally forgot about it. We did an episode talking about the new series, uh, He-Man. When we were done, a totally new new series had come out. So we got back on, we re-recorded something, tagged that on to this episode. By the time that we edited it, season two of the first He-Man came out. So we talked about coming back and re-recording another thing and then putting it together, and it just got uh, zipped and put into a corner of the desktop and uh, largely forgotten about. I don't remember what we say in this show, so I can't actually introduce it all that well, but I do remember what we titled it. So let me say welcome to episode 278 of the Robert E. Animation Podcast. We titled this one, He-Men. Enjoy. I'm Don Bluth. I'm Harry Partridge. Hi, I'm Tom Moore, teenage superhero. My name's Adam Phillips. This is Robert Valley. And I'm in no way uh, doing a forced plug. No, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) (laughs) And you're listening to... Nice. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to do the intro first or do you want to? Yeah, let's just go to the show. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to the show. We'll come back. We'll do the intro uh, uh, later. I hope that my echo in my room here is not being picked up. Can you hear that? Uh, I do not, but. Okay, that's good. You'll sound very godly. Cool. What do you mean? Yeah, oh, you mean because nice. of the echo? Yeah, yeah. Well, I could put an echo on it right now and then it would sound great. Oh, that sounds terrific. <laughs> Thank you for playing along with my future edit. Um, yeah, it's a, a boy. It's it's been a bit, and uh, we've decided we're not going to address it at all because we we've gone into this habit, we've gone into this rotation, and and it's it's all boring stuff. Like we don't need to talk about it anymore. It's the same things every time. It's work. It's moving. It's all that sort of stuff. You moved. I moved. Uh, we're, we're at heightened jobs. I'm moving over to a different job. You're settling into yours. It's just, there's a lot going on. And then you add that to like all the pandemic stuff and then the vaccines. And then it was visiting everyone's family and, and, you know, it was, it was so much going on just to say it's the same that we don't need to share. It's the same thing as yeah. everyone knows. Yeah. But some advancements have been made. Oh, have they? Yeah. This is episode blah, blah, blah in the 200s. <laughs> two, two, 278. I mean, currently the idea is 278. Yeah. And uh, I finally got myself a mic stand. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, and how much was that mic stand? It was like uh, maybe $15. <laughs> also, you're talking the mic stand like a ta- like a desktop mic stand. Uh, wait, no. It's like the one that you have. Like the, the Oh, you did order that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, because last time we talked, you had the desktop mic stand and you just kept like – it picked up all the sound of you picking up and putting down a glass because it was on top of your desk. So no, you, have, uh, you have this one. You have, this, you have like a, a boom mic uh, and, yeah. and, and uh, an actual arm extender thing. I yeah. do want to get the ones that, you know – People do it for podcasts or like YouTube channels where it's like attached to the table and they get to pull it around and stuff like that and maybe get a... Why? I don't know. It looks nice. And maybe get one of those spit guards or the pee poppers, whatever you call those. The- <laughs> yeah, spit guards and pee poppers. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I'll write that down. It's called a pop filter. <laughs> spit guards and pee poppers. <laughs> they're called, yeah, they're called pop filters. Yeah, yeah it, it just looks cool. But maybe I don't okay. need all those bells and whistles. It right? took you this long to buy something <laughs> that would actually be functionally helpful to the yeah. recording and the production of the show. And you're going to spend more money because it looks cool? That's true. I don't believe you for a second. This whole you're going to take that money and you're going to spend it on toys. Y- you are correct. Oh, shoot. You know what? I just It's circular logic because you would consider that thing that looks cool a toy. You know what? I, every time that I need you to like buy something that's uh, functional, 
to 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 life or to the show to like replace this god awful connector you have from your microphone <laughs> to the computer which is very old and very frayed and has this background hissing sound that i have to uh cut out uh, for, with with a noise filter you could just buy another one and, and like sometimes i'll just buy you something because i don't want to wait for our lives to be over yeah that's how long it would take for you to buy something that would be remotely helpful no of course i'm kidding this well, is you know, this is great is this is corner. a great it's a great uh tech- <laughs> this is this is august 18th that we're recording this oh Christmas yeah maybe not, not but it's not around the corner <laughs> you know what i i bet you they're gonna start putting out some christmas stuff immediately uh, yeah Somewhere. it's four months away that is one third of a year <laughs> we're gonna hear mariah this- carey september 15th well, I hear Mariah Carey all year round. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what you think you are. Oh, even the Christmas one. Uh, the Christmas one, I, I avoid. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it does put you in the spirit. You know. I was so waiting for. I, are you going to pick up the banter? Is it going to be? So- <laughs> I was okay. trying to think of a Mariah Carey song, but I couldn't think of any. I just really know the one with Old Dirty Bastard where he goes, "Me and Mariah, we go back like babies to past the fires." <laughs> That's your that's your ODB impression. That was my Bobcat ODB. <laughs> Bob, Bobcat Goldthwait. Hey, Mariah. Uh, okay. Uh, is, is this is this enough uh, enough banter before we can get like into the show? Yeah, unless you want me to sing some more old dirty bastard. Uh, no, I can go on uh, without you. That's a that's a Mariah Carey song. Oh, yeah, I, I was think. like, I don't remember ODB singing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's my it's my uh, it's it's my my fantasy. Oh, I know that one. Yeah, do you? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe I'll play it for you one sweet day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you got me feeling uh, emotions. Was that the title <laughs> of the song or? <laughs> uh, it's okay. You'll always be my baby. Wow, I, I like those are all like I know those titles and I couldn't think of any. <laughs> well, that makes me your hero. So let's go on to the first. <laughs> Thanks for Mariah carrying that. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I, I'm uh, I'm glad that you um, uh, you see the value of my <laughs> of my knowledge. By the way, can I just say this? I'm on a ticking clock right now because long story short. I was waiting for Rob to uh, get off of work so that we could do uh, the show. And in that waiting, I thought, you know what? I'm going to bake bread because I had dough already. It was all ready to go. And I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to take this time and bake the bread. Yeah, he was ready a little sooner than I had uh, expected. And the dough is in, uh, the bread is in the oven right now. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go check because it's 10 minutes away from what I believe would be the end uh, because I already put it in. Uh, it's, it had a good oven rise, uh, got a good, nice crispy ear form in there. Just got to, um, just got to finish off the top of the crust. And I want to make sure that it doesn't brown or it doesn't burn. So I'm going to go check that right now. I'm going to go look at the bread. All right, Steven's yeah. doing a, uh, a a Brexit right now. I already made that joke with him before we started recording, uh, but I figured I'd throw it in there now uh, while it's still fresh, like a uh, bread. It wasn't a fresh joke. You said that joke already. It's a bit sour, like dough. Sourdough. Oh. That's the dough that I'm making. I'm making sourdough. Oh, Don't you did you make a... that joke? Well, I said sour. Yeah. To, to make but did a, you do that on purpose? Yes. This is an animation podcast. <laughs> but it's <laughs> just you know, just to remind everyone. It's the you say onion and it's onion in the title, so. so well, there, that's true. There are food element elements. Idlement. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to rise to the occasion, and you know because bread rises. I swear, I thought you were transitioning to the story. Yes. <clears throat> All right, fresh from the oven. Uh huh. Is a brand spanking 
new He-Man. Are we talking about He-Man? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but you, what a transition. It was the laziest the laziest transition. Yeah, I can't put any music there. I can't put it. Here, I, I'm going to put like some, some, uh, some sound effects or something, some whistles, some slide whistles, some uh, cartoon falling sound effects, whatever. I don't know. It's got to be interesting somehow. Yes, we're talking about the new He-Man. No, no. T- to clarify, we are not talking about the new He-Man. We are talking about uh, Masters of the Universe Revelation. This is an important distinction to make. Oh, boy, I, there's really no way to talk about this without spoilers. We probably shouldn't have started with this. But here's what I'll say. Before I go into any spoilers at all, I will tell you this. Uh, Rob, you only saw the first episode, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, I saw further than that, but I am not going to talk about anything outside of the first episode because all that stuff that you're seeing on the internet, all that stuff that you're seeing online, the the fervor, as it were, uh, is all because of the first episode. And people are talking about it being a bait and switch. Uh, if you really don't want to know anything, that's about it. If you see those, if you see the title, if you see a headline that says people are upset and uh, just look at the title, it's Masters of the Universe Revelations and not, uh, or not Revelations. Uh, yeah, Re- Revelation. It is not He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Now remember, she had come out and it was She-Ra, Princess of Power. Now it's She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. So if you see what they did with that story and they made She-Ra a part of the story, but then had all of the other characters basically equal members of this ensemble, that's kind of what they're doing. Okay, so they're just trying to expand the universe of the Masters. Uh... Yes. So, what what involvement does uh, Kevin Smith have in this exactly? Is he like he's producing it? He wrote it. Oh, he wrote it. Okay. So, as far as like quality, do you want to start with the animation style first or the story? Uh, well, because the bread is almost done, I want to pause. <laughs> so, uh. Where were we? Uh, Masters of the Universe. <laughs> okay, so let's start. As I just wanted to say that, just uh, that we're not really going to be giving spoilers for the whole show. It's only like five, or was it six episodes in the whole the whole season? Five or six episodes? Um, and it's just part one of the first season, and then it goes uh, on to uh, other things. So we'll talk about Kevin Smith. We'll talk about the show. Uh, but we're only going to talk about that first episode. So it's not really a review. It's more talking about kind of the reinvention of the Metelliverse kind of thing and the online uh, response, whatever. So, yes, uh, Kevin Smith uh, started it. Uh, like, they, Mattel came to Kevin Smith as the story goes. That they said, uh, yeah, Kevin Smith, will you meet us to talk about a new project that we want you to do? And he said, uh, sure, where are you located? And then they said something. And then he said, all the way over there? I'm not going all the way there. And then that was the end of it. Some sort of <laughs> California joke, right? You know how California, you know how that's a standard joke in California. They, they like list off some place in California. And they're like, I'm not going all the way over there. And you're supposed to get it. You just kind of laugh and nod and just go, oh, that must be far or this difficult California to get to. Traffic? I get it. It's something about highways and roads. And you're the only place that has <laughs> roads and highways and places that are hard to get to. It doesn't matter. It's a very common joke it's like it's talking traffic there is like talking weather because they don't have weather (laughs) zing to la so then mattel came over to his place and basically pitched him on the the thing of like hey we want you to write a new uh he-man property and so he thought about it he said okay if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it my way the way that i want to do it 
and he came up with whatever this is. So he wrote it, produced it, you know, it's out there. And um, I think Powerhouse Animation uh, does the animation for it. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. I'll, I'll fact check it and I'll cut it out if it's not true. But they did the animation for the Castlevania series on, you know, it's also on Netflix. This is the Masters of the Universe Revelations is a, uh, Revelation is a uh, Netflix series. And so anyway, it is his in the same way that he would write comic books. He comes up with a story, he, you know, and he writes these things. So he's involved in a lot of different properties as a writer. Yeah. Um, and this is one of them. I, I think that he's writing it, doing like show running. I'm not entirely sure what his involvement is past the writing into the animation process and stuff like that. Like, does he does he talk about designs and make choices like that? I'm not sure about that. I think there are animation directors. Uh, so, I mean, he has he has an EP. Um, it looks like there are other EPs on here that are from Powerhouse because there's a lot. Of, I'm seeing a lot of people that were inv- involved in uh, Castlevania. And then there's some other ones that are clearly from uh, Kevin Smith's uh, side. You know, I, there's... Um, I'm just I'm just running down the list of producers, executive producers. Susan Corbin is a producer, and I'm seeing uh, uh, she did visual effects for Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Um, there, there's just I'm assuming, it, but also um, was a producer on Voltron Force. So I don't maybe that's how he got involved. I don't know exactly when he got uh, brought in, but there's some kind of crossover. Uh, to some of these some of these projects there's a lot of producers there's one two three four five six seven executive producers uh which yeah it's a fair amount for executive producers and there are some let's see there's powerhouse animation has two executive producers at least listed on here um and then there is there's a okay line producer obviously and then uh and then a producer which i guess would be the series producer um so anyway it says that there are two directors on here adam conaro and patrick stannard i don't know if i'm pronouncing either their names anywhere close to uh should be but it looks like both of them did uh, animation, were storyboard artists um, and animators on uh, Castlevania. So clearly some powerhouse guys. It, this looks like they're the first directing credit for either of them. And it's five episodes each, which means it's probably two directors per episode because it looks like they're all the same i'm what i'm imagining is kevin smith does the stories he writes everything uh and then they have kind of discussions about what the show is going to be um and powerhouse kind of uh takes it from there through mattel they look at what they want to do powerhouse takes it designs whatever they do gives it to Mattel and Kevin Smith and they kind of approve it or don't uh but it seems like a lot of it is done straight through powerhouse I I'd be I'd be interested to find out what the flow is but it looks like almost all the names I'm seeing on here are either from powerhouse or they are uh producing other Netflix properties funny that you say that because I uh they they did uh uh Castlevania because I remember one of my main complaints was I just hate that style and I, I hate mm. the like American version of anime style, and uh, I think with this one it works better because maybe it's just uh, a property I I'm more familiar with. But like, it's still it's still a style that I just can't really enjoy. Do you think this is? Do you think it's the same style? Um, there's no because it was a lot darker Castlevania, and like I, I think what bothers me that I noticed. Um, their their mouths move, but their chin doesn't go up and down. And- well, yeah, that, that's I mean that's a that's not just to anime, but yeah, that is a, a kind yeah. of a, a classic thing. Is is just the head is its own structure, and then the animation uh, happens within the mouths uh, inside of it. But it happens in a ton of cartoons as well. Yeah, and it's hard to complain about animation style when He Man, the original animation, was not great at all. But, but yeah, like- exactly. 
I do like that stuff. But but maybe I, I okay. I'm just being I'm maybe I'm just talking from like a nostalgic point of view where it's just like you're absolutely like talking from a nostalgic point of view. <laughs> But to be fair, I think I don't even know if I liked He Man the cartoon or I liked the toys more when I was younger. Well, I mean, a, a lot of people they so it's it's funny because I think that what happened, and this is at least what I remember from my brain, the toys, even for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and for the show, um, they were separate. They they occupied separate parts of, of my brain. It was There was the show, and I could enjoy the show, and then there were the toys, and I could enjoy the toys. Same thing for He-Man. The toys were their own thing. The show was its own thing. There were shows out there that I liked but didn't want the toys. There were toys out there that I wanted. I didn't want to watch the show. Um, there were kind of separate things in my head. And I don't know if that's a common feeling. I don't know if, if other people feel that way. But for me, it's kind of uh, uh, separate. I think I was introduced to the toys first because my brother was into He-Man. He had the toys and then I played with his toys before I probably ever saw the show. But yeah, I liked the show. It's general, you know, fantasy uh, engagement for kids. You know, it's it's a it's a land. There are problems to solve. There's you know beasts and you know strong people and magic and I don't know yeah. things happening. It's funny you say in older... this one. What's that? No, your older brother, because my older cousin was a, he had all these toys and I used to go to my aunt's house and every time I left there, he was already done with them. My aunt would give me a He-Man toy. I think that we have. I think we might've talked about this because it got said to the that point before. Where yeah. I went to visit and I was about to leave and she wasn't going to give me one. And I, <laughs> I put up a fuss. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, am I not going to get a He-Man toy? Uh, why am I here? And yep, I got it. you've told that story before. By the way, as long as we're talking about things we've uh, said before, uh, episode 203 of the Rubber and the Animation podcast is when we did our season one review of Castlevania, oh. uh, the Netflix series. If you want to go back and revisit that, that one is a cool hour and two minutes oh, yeah. uh, and 30 seconds, but you know, whatever. Um, so uh, this one, when I, when I saw the episode, so now we're going to talk a little bit more about um kind of the the style you know getting into it some of the uh the voice acting let's just take a moment um can you even name all of the voice actors in in the the show i cannot no uh do you know any of them <laughs> no not at all is you it, couldn't recognize anyone's voice. There was a few in there that were very, very obvious, and I was picking them out as we went along. No, is it like uh, some some big stars in this? Yes. Okay. So I'm just gonna go down the line. All right. Uh, he Man is uh, this guy, Chris Wood. Uh, I'm not very familiar with Chris Wood, so um, I, I didn't recognize him. But Tila is Sarah Michelle Geller, who has one of the most recognizable ah. voices. I can't believe that you didn't recognize her voice. Um, Evil Lynn nailed it right from the get. As soon as she started talking, I was like, that's Cersei from Game of Thrones. That's Lena, uh, um, uh, Hedy, Hedy. I don't know how you pronounce her name. Skeletor. Do you not know who oh, did okay. the voice for Skeletor? Yes, I do. It's uh, Mark okay. Hamill. Mark Hamill. Very easy to pick that, uh, that that's voice out. That's the only out. one. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, Man at Arms. Um, Duncan. Do you know who did his voice? No. It's funny because I was saying he sounds like Liam Neeson. <laughs> and it it ended up being Liam Cunningham which, or, or Cunningham. I don't know how you pronounce his last name either, but uh, from uh, Game of Thrones. Another, uh, uh, but I, I swear, just listen to him and think Liam Neeson sounds like Liam Neeson. Okay. Um, okay. Then there are, uh, okay, you should have gotten Orko. No. I mean, you've animated his uh, this guy's voice like a bunch. Is it John Hamm? No. <laughs> oh, a bunch. Orko. No. Uh, Orko. Oh, okay. So it's someone from our cartoon president. Yes. Oh, wow. And it's not uh, Zach Cherry. No. That would be great. 
Um, it, it's it's the guy who played Jared Kushner. Oh wait, who played Jared Kushner? Oh, it's Griffin Newman. He was uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was Arthur from The Tick. Oh, okay. the the new the new Tick uh, on on Amazon. Oh, I um, didn't know I was animating his voice. Yeah, you were. Uh, okay, Cringer. That's what I like this. This one, this one's very obvious. As soon as he talks, like this, he sounds exactly like this guy. You could not recognize his voice. I don't even know who Cringer is. Cringer's the, um, the, uh, uh, I guess the tiger, but he's like, yeah, he's like a green purple tiger. You know, it's the tiger. Oh, okay. Um, it looks like a panther though, but it's like, it's supposed to be a tiger, I think, but it looks like a panther. Yeah. It's like a tiger panther hybrid. Um, he sounded like Snarf a little bit. Steven Root. I'm act. I'm looking for actors, not fictional characters. <laughs> Steven Root. <laughs> the voice you know, of Snarf. my stapler. Oh, okay. Still my stapler. Yeah. Uh, he's been in so many things. Why do we always go back to that? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so there's all the people that you will encounter as far as those names. It's a lot of people, and then later on, um. And, oh, you know what? Actually, I think Trapjaw was in the first episode, wasn't he? Uh, I think it was briefly like in the beginning or something. Yeah. Okay. So that's Dietrich Bader. I don't know who's that. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, you know what? Another Office Space uh, reference. He was uh, he was the, the guy next door. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. you know what? Fun fact. I animated his voice, too. Uh, uh, for... Uh, uh, trip, trip tank? tank yeah yeah trip tank anyway I just so so it. many so many people uh later on there's also uh justin long does a voice henry rollins does triclops which i just thought was fun oh that's cool. um is that like came out of nowhere it's like i i know that voice and then there he was merman is uh batman himself kevin conroy Stinkor is pops up in in at least one episode from what I could tell. I guess he's in another one, but um Wait, uh, who's Stinkor? Y- yeah, he's kind of like a he's kind of like a like a skunk, like a oh, okay. like a skunk I don't man. Know why I just picture someone who just walks into the room, farts and then says, "Nah, Stinkor." Well, it's played by Jason Mewes, so maybe. <laughs> Uh, and and then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through the rest of the list, but Phil Lamar is in it. Alicia Silverstone, Tony Todd. Um, it, it's just there's a ton of people that are uh, uh, that lend voices to it. And every single time that a voice would happen, and this happened all throughout the first episode. Every time someone spoke, I was like, "That's that person. That's that person." I I said, "That's Stephen Root." Um, I didn't know Gr- Griffin Newman, but I you could definitely hear it in further episodes. But you could definitely tell Justin Long when he came, when his character came up. Um, I got Liam, I got my Liam's mixed up, I guess, uh, yeah. for uh, for niece. But he sounded sounded like Liam. so. No one from Clerks? Mark Hamill was obvious. W- what what did I just say? Jason Mewes. Oh was- yeah yeah yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I picture someone else from. It's literally it's like the last name that I went through. <laughs> I mean, well, not really. I went, uh, you know, Phil Labar, Alicia Silverstone, Tony Todd, big big names. So anyway, it, there was just there a ton of people in that episode. Uh, well, what'd you think about it from a entertainment uh, standpoint? Uh, I like that there was uh, some humor aspects to it. I like the running gag of um, Orko trapping people in a bubble where they can't breathe in it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this was meant to be funny at all, but Skeletor, when he first arrives, uh, he gets cut off and just thrown on the floor. Yeah. So there's some funny things. There's some funny things that happen between the two of them, actually. My favorite uh, laughed out loud during this when he transforms into He-Man when Adam transforms into He-Man, the furry underwear, <laughs> the way, like the furry underwear goes over the butt and then he's rotating around and it goes around the hip. And thankfully it, 
it completes the rotation and like grows around his uh, around his body and covers up his crotch just before <laughs> the camera rotates around and the crotch is directly in the center of frame it was very funny because like obviously the um the way that the transformations happen uh how you're just close up on on the various body parts and the fact that uh, like everything that he's wearing is incredibly revealing. And then he has this furry underwear and Skeletor also has furry underwear. I don't, I think I mentioned that once before, but it's just funny because I think they're going for like some sort of loincloth type of deal, but it's, it's furry. It's exceedingly furry. Yeah. Um. Anyway, the whole transformation looks pretty funny and it's never been like, like in the, Old cartoon, he just kind of put his uh, sword up in the air, and then like lightning strikes, and then he's he man, right? Yeah, exactly. It's not. It's, it's not a metamorphosis. Yes, exactly. It's not a metamorphosis of of him. You know, his, his arms are bulging out and stuff like that. Um, as as this is all happening to him, Sailor Moon is a great example. It's very Power Rangers. Um, it's I I think that scene is almost like. Um, fake nostalgia it's like it's like you may watch it and go oh look it's the transformation scene and maybe not even realize that there was no transformation scene in uh in the show yeah but it's fun it's a fun bit uh i think that skeletor is fine he's campy but they don't make him too how how do I say this? They didn't play it too serious. No, it but serious. it kind of points out how stupid he is because because by the time you get to the end of that first episode, you're like, what was his plan? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say too much about what's going on before I give an actual spoiler warning, but it was it was funny uh, the way that they put all of the characters together. I liked to, uh, you know, evil Lynn and the, uh, the sorcerers, uh, the sorceress is super powerful. And um, yeah, it was fun. It was a fun opening scene. I, I got to say fun though, opening show when it first started and they had like the graphics uh, in, at the beginning, I, I love that. I love the way it looked. I love uh-huh. the uh, they they use kind of like a an effect, but it looked like these like um, almost um, like oil painting colors, you know. It's and then uh, when the actual animation started, I was kind of like, you know what? I don't know. I kind of like the <laughs> I kind of like what I was seeing before that, you know. But I think the, the overall tone was fine with me. But it, I don't think there was anything there to kind of like make me go like oh I, I think i want to continue this well let's uh let's give our spoiler warning this is only a spoiler warning for the end of the first episode not for the whole show in in general but uh if you want to experience what m- many people across the internet experienced uh in uh in in delight or anger um don't listen to what we're about to say so i'm going to put down a marker okay uh, so <laughs> why don't you break it? Would you, what happens at the end of the first episode? They all, I was confused a bit because they all get frozen in oh. time and he man goes like, the only way I could solve this is if I die. And then, uh, oh, he stabs Skeletor and Skeletor was like, I've been waiting for you to do that for, to use that weapon for years. It felt like such a weird, it felt like when you're playing toys with, when you're a kid with a friend and like, oh, you're dead. Oh, am I dead? No. Because somehow, He-Man's sword opened up this, this weird thing. And the only way He-Man could stop it is if him and, and Skeletor dies at the same time. The follow up, the follow up, he has any involvement in the rest of the series. But uh, okay, you. so you explained more than I was thinking. Basically, oh. what I was trying to get to is He Man and Skeletor die in the first episode. <laughs> that's that's the head. That's the headline. The point is, um, it's what happened was 
Skeletor got what he wanted. He he went there, he saw the source of the power in Castle Grayskull, and they were trying to get into it and everything, and then it turns out that they couldn't get into it. The only way they could get into it was uh, to use the sword of power to actually use it like as a, as a key, basically, to open up the central part of Castle Grayskull, and then boom, there's your, you know, there's, there's all the power of Eternity, all the power of the universe. Um, so... I guess his plan was Skeletor's plan was to stand in front of stand in front of the the, <laughs> the keyhole, and um, yeah, he kills like Moss Man. Also, that's I guess we didn't talk about that. <laughs> like <laughs> Moss Man's there to protect everything, and um, Moss Man is um, Alan Oppenheimer. He was the original Man at Arms and Cringer Skeletor. That sounds like an imaginary name. Let's mark here. What's that? His name. Does it sound real? Uh, Oppenheimer. I'm listing off Alan Oppenheimer's uh, roles. He it, it, for voiceover roles in uh, he was Overlord on Black Star. He was Skeletor, Man at Arms, Merman, um, and uh, uh, I guess he was also Cringer and uh, uh, Battle Cat. But uh, listing off his his things here, I'm seeing Skeletor, Man at Arms, Merman. Um, he was the uh, let's see. He was Thundar the Barbarian. He was the narrator in the Neverending Story. Oh, okay. He was just in all sorts of things. Anyway, so he played Moss Man. So I bring back this this great voice actor who'd done all these things and the original show. Kill him in the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that's what kind of makes He Man upset. So he's charging after him with uh, charging after Skeletor with the with the uh, with the sword, stabs Skeletor right through the chest, and then Skeletor says that line about you you know you finally used it, and we think it's about him using it to like kill him. So that's that's a meta thing, but actually it was his plan to have him open up the power or whatever. So they open up the power or whatever, and it, it just sets off this cascade reaction where Skeletor and He-Man can't contain it. He-Man needs to do it himself. It breaks the sword apart, kills him and Skeletor, and then there's like, there's the the Enchantress is just like trying to hold it all together. It's ridiculous. I can't actually figure out what the point of it all was. Well, I think that Kevin Smith really wanted to uh, work on Clerks 3. And uh, he needed to wrap this up. It felt okay. like a very rush ending. Uh, yeah, it felt like the ending of a show, and I I thought that uh, like the the uh, like a series finale, and that's why people are upset. People are upset because well, the, yeah, the trailer looked awesome. Like the trailer looked like I feel like they just they made it seem more like badass than than it really was well i don't know i don't want to say badass because i oh. watched the next few episodes and i'll just tell you that like what they do and it is very much the same thing as what they did in she-ra and i like she-ra i thought it it worked really well it's uh they're going all over eternia you're meeting all these different people people have to you know band together and there's weird alliances that are formed and uh it's cool it's a it's a cool idea it's a cool concept the problem is for some people to eliminate He-Man from that equation, <laughs> while it's good from a storytelling standpoint, because you're taking away the most, the strongest man in the universe, right? The guy who's going to solve all the problems. Like every time there's a problem, you take him out of the equation. Now it's open to other people to rise to the occasion and solve some uh, some of the problems. Yeah. Makes sense. It's just, as I said, there's a... a f- fantasy fulfillment part of the equation that they're not fulfilling. And so it does beg the question of, well, who are they making it for then? I think the ultimate show that they're making is good, but then you run into the problem of, well, who's going to watch it? And it's not because it's not a good show. It's because you marketed it to be one thing and had a whole bunch of people who are very vocal (laughs) watch it 
and then you murdered the person who <laughs> I, heroically, uh, notwithstanding, uh, the person who is at the center of their fantasy fantasy fulfillment. They're going to be the loudest. And then you have these two things that are fighting. You have on one side, you have uh, uh, you have very vocal fans on the internet from the original show saying that it's terrible and it's awful and you don't get He-Man and all that sort of thing. And just ba- basically, they're going to spoil all of the story points, just kind of like we're doing now, but they're going to do it in a way that's like, this is so stupid because of you know all these things. And then on this other side, you have tv reviewers you know that that are are paid to like watch tv and to talk about things and story structure and stuff like that the only people who will listen to reviewers are like people our age which this isn't even for me it's the same thing with she-ra like it's not so i don't really know where they're gonna land as far as who's going to watch it because you you have to get people to watch it first. And I don't know that they have a good avenue to get people to watch it because of the way that it was marketed. If they marketed it the same way they did She-Ra, I mean, I guess they benefited from the fact that they didn't kill She-Ra in the first episode. (laughs) But if they marketed it in the same way, if you remember, I said, I think... You know, people were saying like, oh, when when are they going to bring in He-Man? It's like, I, I hope they don't bring in He-Man. But I hope that they would do a He-Man series. I think I'd probably talk about it in that, in the 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 review that I gave of, of She-Ra. If they did a He-Man series, it would have to be a very different tone uh, to this one. And I think that they should go very campy with it. They should lean into the camp. And then you could have some sort of, crossover kind of thing where he's just it's um i don't know it's kind of like your your idiot cousin from la i'm gonna dunk on la again but (laughs) (laughs) who like who who like comes over with i don't know all of his hot friends or something and but they're all stupid (laughs) (laughs) it's like you could do something kind of fun like that yeah um Oh. They just went a completely different route. And actually, what they kind of ended up doing is they kind of ended up taking what they did with She-Ra and just made it for a slightly older demographic, like really only just a few years older, um, and just did the same thing. Yeah. So in that regards, it's strange. It's a strange choice. I've always felt that He-Man needed to... Now, if there was ever a reboot again, to be a comedy but you know sure. comedy adventure or something well like the tick like he should be the tick basically yeah yeah and like or either that or go fully like like primal you know something like that no because then that would be conan the barbarian and then you could just come full circle oh, back, back to they <laughs> they were just stealing conan the barbarian anyway yeah um My so dream and cast though for a, a he-man movie i don't know if john cena might be old now to be he-man no, 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 no. Yes, no, no. Uh, Jim Carrey as Skeletor. No, see, see that now. What you're doing is you're, what you're doing is you're Two. casting, you're casting for like 10, 15, 20 years ago. Like you're, you're cast <laughs> in your head. You're casting an older movie. You're casting yeah. in the time of like this. Your movie should be produced <laughs> by Joel Schumacher in the nineties. All right, fine. Pete Davidson as Skeletor. I mean, see that could work. <laughs> you know what does work? What the? Uh, you ever? You, we we share this a lot with each other. These stop motion shorts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with He Man, yeah. I feel like that would grab people's attention because it's kind of making it the same feeling as playing with your toys as a kid. Sure. And uh, I think... I, But I, I feel like you Justin, get that with... Justin Rash? Is that his, his name? Yeah, something like that I think would have been great. Like a, a stop motion He-Man. I, think, I, I know it would cost a lot of money, a lot of time. Maybe 30 uh, Well, years. yeah. I, I mean, obviously it would. I can't imagine that this one was uh, entirely cheap. But what you're talking about now and what we're talking about is is this is like a complete it's a, it's a, it's a not a reimagining, but it's like a uh, uh, looking at what they did and saying, oh, well, don't go in that direction. Go in this completely different direction. I mean, you could go straight nostalgia and just get like J.J. Settlemyer because remember, remember, uh, 
he in his studio did what was it a geico commercial that had he-man in it it was basically just like it looked like a he-man episode oh yeah yeah um and uh it was just a geico commercial you could go that direction and do it almost like uh c lab or do it like uh harvey birdman something like that you could go that direction um because then what you're doing is you're playing on the nostalgia but you're also playing on uh on the cynicism of uh, being older and you you want to make fun of it but you also you want your thing you want your toys but you also want to make fun of the fact that you have toys and you want to make fun of the fact that you genuinely want your toys right that's yeah. kind of where I think a lot of the nostalgia lands right now. And this is different. This is taking the story because the other thing is it's canon. <laughs> it's not, this is not going back and doing another story. This is like the reason it hits Tila very hard because the premise is that they've already had all these adventures, all these stories, everything has already happened. He-Man is is the he-man that we know so he dies <laughs> <laughs> at the end so you watch all of he-man and then at the kickoff of this and i think you can probably ignore the what was it 2002 version of he-man 2003 oh, yeah, whatever yeah. i think you can ignore that one although that one was pretty good um but but and see that one they went in the kind of uh lord of the rings uh style type of deal um, but kept He-Man in it. This one, they're focusing more on Tila. If you could think that Tila is kind of like the, the the focus. And it's an interesting idea that Tila was like the character who was closest to everyone, who was also the one that didn't know that Adam was He-Man. And they they kept that going through this whole thing. So you have like He-Man's girlfriend uh, made explicit or implicit who doesn't know that Adam is He-Man and then they kill He-Man and then find out that she finds out that He-Man was Adam and her brain is broken. She just runs away and, and goes off and she becomes like some sort of mercenary or something. And then now she's uh, going all over Eternia. It's a fine concept. It's just by its very nature, <laughs> it's going to piss off the people who are going to sit down excited with their candy and hold their bobblehead in their hand and they're going to click play and they're going to be like, yeah, He-Man. And then they're going to watch <laughs> He-Man just die. He-Man and Skeletor die in the first episode and then watch basically the side characters that nobody ever really cared about get you know rightfully their due but i think that they it probably would have been more successful had they kept he-man around the way they did with she-ra in and and made the other characters um more important than they were in the original series rather than just straight up murdering yeah, the i think the the way they should have handled this was make a <laughs> he-man uh a new masters of the universe animated movie uh it could be straight on netflix and you slowly introduce all these other characters to, to you know the way they're going to do it now and then have he-man die in that and then announce that there's going to be a series of the universe of the world that they have you could do that but then okay so yes but then you're going to have to bring them back at some point now i'll say that i haven't finished the season but um i i do get the idea that they're going to either bring him back or they're going to bring skeletor back because this is just the first uh part it's the first part of the first season or whatever so it's like five episodes and there's gonna be another five it's a 10 season it's just split up into two parts i think i think is the way that it, it works um by the way, can I also just say, because I had all this stuff opened up on IMDb and everything, I just learned out, I just learned just now, the the sorceress of Castle Grayskull in the original series was played by Christina Pickles. Do you know who Christina Pickles is? No. Uh, Christina Pickles played Mrs. Geller, played uh, Judy Geller on Friends, Ross and Monica's mom. Oh. So anyway, that just... It's a French connection. Just to break that, just to bring that up, I I don't 
I don't know why I didn't know that, but I didn't know that until just this moment. Um, anyway, so I want to be clear. <laughs> I actually like the direction that they're going. I do think it's funny that they just kind of... I, I think people are talking about this as, as though it's a, a new thing, but they literally did the same thing with She-Ra. They just didn't kill She-Ra to do it. Yeah. So that's really the only difference. <laughs> um, and it's probably in the tweens age group, I think, as far as, you know, who they're who they're shooting for. Yeah. Uh, I just, I don't know how successful it's going to be. That's more of like a marketing question. That's more of a business question. I, from a storytelling standpoint, they did all the parts right. They set things up in that first episode. It's just, if you are expecting He-Man to be in it, uh, it might actually be a good thing to know that he's not going to be. I just imagine one guy going, finally, after we had to put up with that Thundercats roar, bull crap, now we got a real He-Man. <laughs> this yep. happens. I think that is I think that's exactly <laughs> what happened. Uh, and there was just, uh, I mean, there was like a collective groan across the internet. And when I watched the first episode, I think I laughed for like a minute yeah. straight at the end of it because I just the the gall to do that. It's I know it's don't. called Mass it's called Masters of the Universe, but even <laughs> even the movie with Dolph Ludgren was called Masters of the Universe and it still had <laughs> He Man in it. We just don't want middle. It didn't have anything we don't else. Want middle-aged men to be happy. We just, we just, just is, isn't them. that funny? Well, no, no. It, it's as far as catering to to a group. Um, it is cynical to think that. Obviously, I feel like they would make plenty of 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 money to cater to, uh, uh, what have what have been termed, uh. Uh, a man child uh, to cater to this group, yeah. uh, the fan uh, fandom. I was going to say fanboys, but let's 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 go fandom in general. But let's be clear: it's probably fanboys it, to cater to this particular group. Sure, probably would have made uh, let's say a stable amount of money. Like there is an expected amount of money. You can actually probably count how many people just based on Twitter feeds and stuff like that, that would actually, that would watch it and would buy toys and do unboxing videos and things. And maybe that would lead to uh, kids, you know, uh, opening up the toys or something. And then, then seeing the show later, you could go that direction. And I would not fault anyone for going that direction. As you brought up Thundercats roar. I don't have a problem with them going Thundercats roar because they didn't delete all the other episodes of Thundercats. <laughs> they still exist. Yeah. And what they're doing doesn't insult what came before it. I find it interesting that this is canon. <laughs> so that, I feel like, could be interpreted as a direct slight <laughs> to the fandom. <laughs> because it's not they're, not... they're not doing an offshoot. They're saying, oh, no. The He-Man you know from the 80s, this is that He-Man, and we killed him. <laughs> so that, I think, is probably what goes this... <laughs> that feels like a very Kevin Smith decision. That feels like Kevin Smith being in a room with a bunch of people and going, no, 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 guy, no, bro, Tell, I, I'm, I'm telling you, dude, it's going to be great. It's going to be this... This is the right way to go. Yeah, what do you think Mattel said? Like, ah, but wait, what about I think Mattel, I think, honestly, I think Mattel, I do not know. I In my brain, I think all toy companies are just filled with people that are too old <laughs> to be running toy companies or to be making decisions in a toy company. I know nothing about toy companies. And I know nothing about the head of Mattel creative development or whatever division they have in my brain it is a bunch of guys in suits who are talking to kevin smith it is stupid uh basketball shorts and hockey jersey uh 
<laughs> talking to them and they think they're talking to this 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 man child and they're like he's got the ear of a generation he's not gonna steer us wrong <laughs> and, and meanwhile he's like what can i do that will just make people angry and they thought let's trust in kevin smith not realizing that kevin smith has not been quote kevin smith for quite a while now he is he is podcaster extraordinaire kevin smith the the filmmaker pop culture uh pulse having icon kevin smith has not been around for like listen i i think moose jaws is gonna be a hit right i i i did hear about moose jaws that's not happening right i think it's still happening yeah uh, isn't that another thing from his podcast? Isn't that because I know I know who's wait now who's your Hozier? Oh, was it? yeah, that yoga and, yoga Hozier. Yeah. Oh, and the and the one where he turns in the wall, the tusk, yeah. that one. Uh, those were both ideas from his podcast, which are just like, man, it almost it feels you know what it feels like. It feels like these movies are um, uh, art prompt a day. Twitter entries or, or Instagram entries, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like putting things together as mad scientist, walrus, make a movie, you know. Um animation battle. <laughs> it does yes, yeah, an animation battle. It doesn't feel like that's that would have been a better thing to say because that's exactly what we do. It's like making a movie off of one of the animation battle topics. But but even some of the people who do take some of the topics they actually have something to say and i don't know what he wants to say and so this one was very interesting because it does focus on other characters and it focuses more almost like a um uh yeah like a, like a character study like a character exploration and it, it feels like it's actually trying to say something maybe a little bit more than what i would imagine the last couple kevin smith films are i don't know i haven't i haven't seen them i saw i saw tusk uh i think i tried to watch uh yoga hosiers hosiers i think uh i yeah, watched I part of it, it and i had to turn it off because it just it felt like um you know how sometimes you watch something from the 90s and you feel like it you know it's that nostalgic path where you watch and go oh man i can't believe what we thought was cool in the 90s but you watch through it because you know that in the time this was considered cool. So you kind of like, okay, you put yourself in that time machine and you watch it. This felt like that, but in a more embarrassing way because it was modern. Yeah. I don't know. That's what happened in, in my brain when I was watching. So anyway, I feel like this is, remember talking about Tim Burton and all of his missteps that we've, that, that he's had in, in movies. And then we watched Frankenweenie and, really liked Frank and Weenie, the movie yeah. that, but it was an animated uh, movie. <laughs> and I know I'm an animator. It's an animation podcast, but here's my thesis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people, directors, auteurs who may from an outside point of view, feel like they have lost some sort of spark of storytelling uh, to really want to get in and explore something with with a with a character, uh, give them an animated project. Maybe the speed, the sheer speed slowdown of an animated project makes them sit down with the story a little bit longer and connect with it a little bit more, rather than just going, "This is my next project." Maybe there's something there. Maybe there's something there. Just slowing it down. That's my thesis. That's my hypothesis. Ooh, thesis is in hypothesis. That's correct. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> um, so your overall analysis of this... That's another good word. Uh, ...of this uh, new He-Man. Uh-huh. Will you continue to watch? For those of you who, who heard his the sound of his voice... Get a little weird there for a second. <laughs> I'm watching him very serious. Just like I know you were itching your nose, but no, you just like was right in there. 
you you stuck your you stuck your finger like right in a nostril to the point where it was it's like it's like if you were trying to prop up a tent <laughs> it's the stick that went in. I felt a little brain in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Continue. Was what you saw? You said you're what, like uh, two episodes in? Uh, no, no, no. I'm I I watched uh, four episodes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, you're gonna continue. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think, as a He-Man fan, will you like? Does it does it hold up? Uh, do you ever say like, man, I still feel cheated. I didn't feel cheated because I didn't invest yeah. in I'm sure the if it was episode. the reboot of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and they killed all the turtles and it See, focused that's on I was thinking Bebop about that. I'm glad steady. you I'm glad you brought that up because Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would be a hard thing to do. I think I had the same feeling with Splinter. Um there is a series where they kill Splinter. And then there's like this weird reboot series where the entire premise of the run of episodes is they're like trying to gather his like soul back up to like put him back together again, kind of. It's a very weird thing. And that I did feel like completely disinterested because splinters that rock that kind of holds them down because otherwise they're teenagers you need you need something to you can't show their teenageness if they don't have anything to butt against their whole the whole thing is there needs to be some sort of parental figure to butt against right yeah but if you take four turtles if you kill one of them you still have the other three so if you were to say leonardo was the leader you kill leonardo and now it's the other turtles I wouldn't have a problem with that either. I mean, uh, you know, poor Leo. But my point is, from a storytelling standpoint, you still have that dynamic there. Uh, I think what happened, if you take away the fantasy fulfillment aspect of uh, some guys looking at He-Man and wanting to be He-Man, and then they just (laughs) killed the strongest man in the universe... (laughs) If you take that part away and you look just at just a pure enjoyment standpoint, a pure writing standpoint, uh, what they did is they shook up the dynamic in in a way that with She-Ra, it worked to shake up the dynamic because they didn't take away one of the linchpins. She-Ra and um, Catra were the driving force of the show. And then you had, you know, other characters and, uh, and, and the, uh, the land as a whole. And there was this, there's overall story push that was going forward, but you still had kind of, um, an emotional core. And, but the character, you know, quote main character is it was named She-Ra, right? So, um, is still in the show. Masters of the universe, you take away He-Man and Skeletor that's what the entire show of He-Man was built on. It was built on He-Man and Skeletor dynamic, and everyone else was just like, yes men for each person. You know, Skeletor had his yes men, and He-Man had his yes men. Uh, and, and that was it. And that, those were the teams. You kill both of them, and now you're looking at the other characters. It's a completely new dynamic. And also, it's not just strict good and evil anymore. Now there's, you know, team-ups and things that are happening across teams. Interesting from a storytelling standpoint, but it's, like, risky for someone to get involved in a new thing where it's like, it's it's just a new show. You should have just made a new show, and it probably would have been great and fine. You probably could have picked another property to do this with. He-Man and and Skeletor didn't really have anything to them other than He-Man and Skeletor. Yeah. Even the original She-Ra, it was balanced out a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was disappointed. Oddly enough, they killed Roseanne the same way uh, before the Connor started. (laughs) And I was just like, I was not expecting that. Uh, I, I, you know what? I'll let you keep that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna continue if you like She-Ra I'll say that the new She-Ra and the Princesses of Power the new new series if you like that and you kind of like what they did with um, uh, you know with this kind of um, 
uh, globe trotting uh, fantasy type uh, story. It's the same. It's basically the same thing as uh, as what they're doing um, with Masters of the Universe Revelation. Like, I I haven't gotten to the end. Uh, it's what one more episode. I'm, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna watch it, but I didn't get to the end. Um, it's it's fine. If you like that, you will enjoy it. Just yeah. go into it knowing that He Man's not in it. That's it. It's pretty simple. It's not any more complicated than that. But it is fascinating Mm. what happened with the show and the rollout of the show. And I'm very, very interested to see if it catches on, if people like it. Because then that's a gamble that paid off. It feels like a gamble that has a very low likelihood of paying off. Yeah, it's like bringing a Garfield and... Dies choking up lasagna. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you kill Garfield, and the rest of the movie is Odie and John. John and Odie. <laughs> Just John starts taking Odie around as his uh, emotional support dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to know yeah. that it didn't make you mad. At like- oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We we can't. No, this is it. This is the end of the episode. We're not going to continue. Okay, we'll good. do. We'll we'll do another episode with the other stories. Uh, what could it possibly be? What was he about to transition to? Find out next time. Uh, on the Rubber and Animation Pocket. Did they ever do that on He Man? Find out next time. I don't think they did. No, but it sounds like a very like He Man thing. It's it sounds Tune like in a thing. next sure. weekend. Yeah, yes. I could do a Skeletor accent, but I need something to say. Did Skeletor have an accent? I mean, oh, his voice. I could you do, mean a uh, voice? Yeah, I could do. Tune in next week to the Rubber Onion Podcast. Okay, two things. That number one, the first <laughs> thing that was more like, uh, uh, "Hey, Dum Dum, <laughs> what's his name?" <laughs> oh. The other thing is, <laughs> it Greg sounded Kazoo. it sounded exactly yes, Great Kazoo. And the other thing, it sounded exactly like Mrs. Santa Claus from my animated yep. short and Saving you knew Christmas. It because I had to strangle myself you in order to, to s- make that yes, sound exactly. come out. Tune in. Tune in next See the week. thing is you're you're going too high. You have to uh he, you have to stay low. You have a he man. You have to oh, stay low yeah, down yeah. at the bottom. See that's the, Oh, that's that was actually thing. pretty good. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye. Watch the show. Hey, watch the show. It's fine. What it's only 5 episodes. Just check it out. You like it? Cool. You don't whatever. What have you lost? I was trying to find out if this joke is appropriate or not. But what what if Prince Adam if you look at Prince Adam's uh like uh, he addresses his pronouns on his social media as he slash man. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Is yeah. that woke or is it or is it boom, boomer humor? That would actually be a really funny bit if he's just constantly accidentally giving away <laughs> that, he, <laughs> that he's he man. He's trying to make a dating profile and now uh, you know so writing his pronouns. You could just you could go to uh, you could go to the bank and it's just like a, a rainy day and he takes his jacket off and then just a sword falls on the ground and he like picks it up and puts it back in. There's a whole bunch of bits you could do with Prince Adam. Generators were not working. We we need we need to get power. I have <laughs> like, the power. There's something there, but it's really more of a uh, robot it, chicken. Uh, yeah, but then is that it's a, it's a robot chicken? It's bit. just that sitcom, uh, so, son of. Uh, Zanos? Zorn. Yeah. Oh, Zorn. Did you say Xanos? <laughs> it's like Danos and Zeus. <laughs> uh, z- uh, enjoy hate watching He Man, I guess. Yes. Oh, no, sorry. Masters of the Universe Revelation. It's not He Man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Masters of the Universe Repercussions. <laughs> <laughs> Wait! What? We actually recorded this entire episode of the podcast. Uh, and then the next day in the morning at like 8 a.m., Rob sends me a message and he goes, so dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, Rob? There's another reboot of He-Man on top of the I, reboot. I, I asked you, what was the thing you sent me? 
Oh, okay. I sent you uh, a new, brand new CGI He-Man Masters of the Universe. You sent me the trailer. That's oh, what I was getting at. There's a okay, trailer, yeah. and it just dropped. You know what? This is uh, we could only we were recording it on his lunch break. Uh, his brain is all scattered. I sent um, you more He-Man. Yeah. <laughs> he sent me another trailer for for He-Man, and I think, if I remember. Uh, uh, less than 24 hours ago, you told me, because I didn't know this, that this was part of like a three-pronged plan. There was the Masters of the Universe, and then there's a He-Man show for kids, and then there's a movie, uh, or at least that's, I think, what you just told me in the episode that the people listening right now will have listened to, but for us, it was yesterday, so I can't really remember, but I think that was it. Uh, And then the next morning, you send me this trailer. So we thought, okay, I guess we'll just have to jump on and talk about it because it does alter a little bit of some of my perspective on what they were doing with the Masters of the Universe because He-Man is very prominent in this one, but there are some differences. So what did you think about the trailer? I mean, you just said it's CG. Yeah. Um, but describe a little bit more about the trailer. It's, it reminds me of like uh, He-Man Revenge of the Clones or something. What, what was that Star Wars? Uh, <laughs> At- Attack? Attack, Attack of, of the Clones. clones. <laughs> Revenge of the Clones. <laughs> it had that look to it. Or, or maybe even like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that came out. That was uh CG. I mean, you're kind of just describing CG animated TV is what you're describing. I mean, there's like... There's a lot of blues and yellows and magentas and, uh, um, the, you know, the, the, the features are uh, sharp. So, like, um, there's, a, uh, there's a sharp edge around the face. So, usually, like, um, where the chin, uh, the chin line, the front of the chin is, sometimes that is kind of like a, a sharp corner rather than rounding off. And, uh, you know, kind of toy line-esque. Yeah, uh, hair sometimes is looks kind of plasticine. That's kind of the the, the look that you're describing. But I, I, it's uh, just to jump ahead. It's done by the same. Well, I guess the the animation is done by two studios: House of Cool and CGCG, um, at, which worked on Troll Hunters. House of Cool was uh, Troll Hunters. If you remember that, um, I think we talked about it. Guillermo del Toro produced animation uh, on Netflix. Do you remember oh, that? okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I got confused and, with that uh, Norwegian horror movie we saw. Oh, no, that's Troll Hunter. That's yeah. uh, <laughs> singular. Uh, and then CGCG it actually did work on uh, the uh, the Clone Wars. So there's that, oh, uh, okay. that thing that you just kind of uh, worked over. So uh, I guess, yeah, sure. If you want to combine the, the, the colors, the look, the ambient look, uh, troll hunters with, I guess maybe the character uh, design rigs uh, of of Star Wars, uh, the Clone Wars. Sure, I can kind of see that, but I mean, it's just you know, it's fairly. Um, I don't want to say generic. It's just you know what it looks like. You know, yeah. When we describe those things, it's funny because the promo image that I'm looking at right now. <laughs> I think it's just because of what they did with. Um, Cringer slash Battle Cat. Uh, we'll get into a little bit of their designs, but I think the way he's standing and looking, and I don't know, all the other characters, I'm getting super Beast Wars vibes, oh, which I know is not, okay. it's, it's not like, I'm not saying, you know, that was very, very, very early CG. I, all I mean is <laughs> it just looks kind of like a Beast Wars character. Um, I mean, not, anyway, go not ahead. As bad. I, I, no, 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 no. I, we're in twenty. I, we're in twenty twenty one. Obviously, uh, the texturing and the animation and everything and the designs it, they're they're much better. The, the polygon count is I don't know. It's it's it's, it's, it's much much more uh, than than Beast Wars. I will obviously. say while watching it, if I was like younger, around where Beast Wars and Johnny mm-hmm. Quest. Remember when Johnny Quest? Uh, yeah, the new adventures and, of Johnny Quest. Yeah, yeah he uh-huh. would go into like a CG world and, and reboot and all that. Yeah, the uh, the internet. <laughs> he went into uh, what was the what was the name of the internet that he went into? Oh, I forget. But did he put on like 
uh, a, oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to find. They did go into the internet, but I'm trying to find MapQuest. No, that's pretty. I, I'll, that is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but I totally. I, I actually, I only, I didn't respond because <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm looking. I'm trying to look it up. I but um, I oh, it's actually, it. it's not the new adventures. It's Johnny Quest, the real, the real adventures of Johnny Quest. Uh, um, the the new adventures of Johnny Quest was 1986. Uh, the real adventures of uh, Johnny Quest was like 1996. I wonder if they meant real because like they're they're like three dimensional. Uh, yeah, that that could be it. All right, so back to this. Um, yeah, well, it, it made me think of that in those kind of days. I think I would have been. It really might be into que- it might be Quest World actually. I, Maybe Quest tri- World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it takes tri- place cold? in a, a virtual realm call of Quest World. Uh-huh. Well, you answered that question. Shun. Shun. Uh, okay, so tell me about the trailer. Um, well, they're, they're really going for, I think what we even kid around uh, at the end of the episode was um, of Adam being, Prince Adam being kind of a goof. Uh-huh. Uh, I think they're really going for that now. And yeah, I, I kind of like that they did, you know, he's he's like a scrawny teenager. He turns into this like giant he-Man, because that before that's there was no difference between He-Man and Prince Adams, uh, and I think that's what they were trying to do with the Kevin Smith version, and I think this one they're going more of a yeah maybe even not Toxic Avenger in the his, no no no, his no. I actually think it's more like uh, Shazam. I don't know if you saw oh that yeah movie. yeah 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 more like Shazam. He he. Uh, turns into this other and so they they are around a campfire i was kind of i was looking for you to describe the trailer and you kept de- like describing the type of because uh, i trailer. don't know how to describe the trailer really i feel like it's just um uh, well it starts with the so it starts with the side characters and basically what you're seeing is you're seeing uh a lot of mechanical stuff you're seeing a lot of uh technological stuff so in my mind i'm I'm getting a lot of uh, um, uh, she ra battled uh, mechanic battled uh, machines. He Man mm-hmm. battled magic. So it's interesting that they're rebooting He Man, and they're all kind of like um, oh, what's that game? Over Overwatch. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of like that. I, I mean, I don't really know much about Overwatch. I just all I know is uh, they're they're get up they're they're in these kind of like suits of armor uh they have these uh uh, unique weapons and things like that so you're kind of seeing these different characters and then you get this moment that's a lot like um it's king arthur it's you know sword in the stone it's uh it's actually almost exactly like the scene from the green lantern where he's trying to say the green lantern thing to turn him into the green lantern he's kind of re- trying to repeat repeat a phrase and so he's saying you know by the power of gray skull and uh he has this, <laughs> this ridiculously huge it reminds me a bit of i know i'm kind of hodgepodge and things together but i'm trying to give you a visual uh I, you should watch the trailer obviously but as i'm watching this i'm thinking the the sword looks a lot like a final fantasy sword like one of those yeah. that is huge and futuristic and mechanical and c- couldn't possibly be used for any practical purpose. Um, and then the uh, to that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing, like whenever they show uh, uh, magic in some of the newer series, it's like it's almost like v- yeah, kind of like VR magic, AR magic. It's uh, uh, it has this. Uh, this feeling of like a spell is actually a computer thing that is activating this. I don't know. It's it's got words that are spinning around it, um, and then it turns into this uh, beam of light, and then he turns into He Man, and He Man has a giant chest cavity. <laughs> And very long arms and super tiny legs. Uh, he Man just completely ignores. He Man skips leg day is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, then you have like his 
and even his get up is uh it is a little strange. He, I mean, he has the sword in his chest. He has this kind of uh, battle armor type uh, type deal. Tiny head. Um, his design is sure. It's very kind of uh, the tick. I think I brought yeah. up the tick before. It's it's proportions of the tick or Gronk from. Uh, emperor's new groove he's kind of like that oh my god wouldn't it be uh, amazing if patrick warburton were the voice of of he-man patrick (laughs) warburton should be the voice of he-man what are they doing yeah i mean i noticed that he-man's voice in here is to say it's the same voice from uh it's it's prince adam's voice you would think right right gets all big and bulky he'll have like a different kind of like manlier voice yeah, so then you see this bad guy who is not Skeletor, and then you kind of see a devil face that looks like the Green Goblin, which, I are they going for Skeletor? I'm, I'm not entirely sure um, if there is a... I'm, I, I assume oh, that there I is, but I think... Like the, they were that's their the version. Of, uh, Skeletor. Like, it, that, they showed him like, close-up. Yeah, 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 but I, I'm saying he doesn't look like Skeletor. He just kind of has like a, an evil skeletonish type of face. The only thing I would even read as skeleton is that nose, that like triangle uh, nose cavity. So I think what they're doing is they're going for like, um, because the guy that shows up is another prince. And so I think what they're doing is it's like there's Prince Adam and then there's this other prince guy. Um, so Prince Adam is He-Man and then Prince something or other i when you start talking i'll 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 look it up but that he is skeletor so now it's two princes against each other i I think that's kind of where they're going with the uh with the idea um which you know it it feels more fantasy future technological land with you know what it feels like it feels like raya where it's just it's this land uh, that has different uh, empires or different um, um, uh, different countries, wh- whatever uh, whatever you would call it, that has a different ruling structure. Yeah, and a lot like actually Shira because they're going to the different places. Um, I was going to say that I was like, well, when we did the Shira review, we were wondering yeah. like how could they uh, incorporate He Man in, in that world? And I think if these characters were the same. Uh, these characters seem like they can interact with Shira, other than you know the the uh, I mean different I, animation I, style. I guess so, but I actually think that Shira is is skewing a bit older. Actually, I think this is skewing very young. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. maybe Shira is skewing young enough to have to have crossover here, but I. I I felt that Shira was actually skewing a little bit older. Was dealing with at least some things that um, uh, you know, sisters, friends, parents. Um, you know, uh, was dealing with things that that you would deal with in your uh, transitioning into teenage years, uh, kind of thing. And this is still kids. Like this feels very. Um, Maybe like Big Hero 6? I I guess kind of Big Hero 6, sure. But I mean, Big Hero 6, I still feel like, maybe because it was a movie dealt with uh, with different things, this feels very young. This feels like, and maybe I'm totally off, but it feels like late single digits, I guess. Like a 8, 9, 10 years old, I don't know, is kind of what what I'm getting from this. But I, I may be totally wrong. Up to twelve, I don't know if I don't know if kids that are like thirteen, fourteen, fifteen are gonna are gonna dig this all that much. You know what I mean? Now we were um, talking about um, Mattel and their thoughts on He Man dying early in the Kevin Smith right, right, thing, right, right. And I, I guess maybe they thought, well, you know what? We have another He Man coming. So maybe it was the death of the adult uh, for our He Man. Yeah, the birth that's tot- of a that totally. That totally makes sense. That totally makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. I, I just, again, I kind of look at this and I'm just thinking it it just feels, they're going in such a different direction, which is great, but it does feel somehow samey as other things. And I, I don't really know what it is. I think maybe it's because I, I, I brought up Voltron, but Voltron's not around anymore. Uh, there's 
uh, I don't know, Troll Hunters is uh, <laughs> the anime. The one of the animation companies uh, worked on Troll Hunters. It feels uh, kind of like that. It feels uh, uh, I don't know. It just it feels it doesn't feel like it has its own uh, uh, very unique. Um, uh, perspective on things it's just kind of like another series to fit in there and I, I don't know I, I just think you could probably do something else with a He-Man and Masters of the Universe uh, property than, than goes I haven't seen it I'm just looking at the trailer it just um, I do like how they <laughs> I don't know if you noticed it but like everyone gets their own transformation uh, scene Oh yeah, yeah. All all the all the different characters are, are kind of like getting their own thing and so like Man at Arms is uh they're, they're all younger and they're all just yeah, Big Hero 6 is probably really good uh, comparison but they're they're all younger, they're all uh and they're sitting around a campfire and they're kind of talking to He-Man or talking to Prince Adam about like uh so wait, were you like in his body, uh, and and his mind was somewhere else, or are you the same, or was it his mind in his body and you were somewhere else, like a like a dimension or something? So I kind of liked that, where that felt like a movie bit. That felt like it, that's the kind of thing that would happen in a movie with kids sitting around. Um, it felt like a very Shazam moment. Yeah. Where it, it's almost like that's for the adults. And it, it, it felt the like the it. yeah, the kind of He-Man series where you can kind of go about that. Like when you when you wonder what happens to the Hulk shorts when right. uh, when he turns into the Hulk. So Man I did I did look uh I did look it up. Um uh Skeletor is this guy named Prince Keldor. That that's that's it. They're going with a um prince versus prince kind of thing. That's like that. not a bad idea. I feel like yeah. I don't know what the original battle with He Man and Skeletor was to begin with. Well, Skeletor wanted the power that was in Castle Grey Skull. And uh, He Man was like the protector of Castle Grey Skull. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um there is one thing that I found a little interesting is that uh Cringer doesn't seem to have his own transformation into battle cat other than the fact that he has these kind of mechanical uh claws so it's it's it is cringer cringer himself not transforming into big muscular battle cat it's uh it's He's always gr- it's green and yellow cringer but now with uh with you know, machine with like Wolverine hands kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's, it's that kind of, uh, uh, kind of deal. So it looks like the only person who really transforms, uh, body wise is Prince Adam. And that man, I am looking at this and it so looks like final fantasy, just the pose, the way the hair is flowing, the, the ridiculously oversized sword. <laughs> like the <this> sword <laughs> is just, that looks like a sword that like that, I don't know what it's made out of, but that kid would not be able to hold that sword. <laughs> now, uh, how I haven't looked up anything. I did see one like kind of review on it. Um, oh yeah, where there's a this... review out already. Uh, yeah, well, somebody complained about the trailer. Uh, oh, okay, all right. Well, I I don't want to get into that because you know, but this I, is obviously made for young kids. But I do wonder the reaction of every, you know the older folks who watch He Man die. Is this something that they go, okay, maybe uh, uh-huh. I could, you know, introduce my kid to this one instead. I mean, yeah, sure. Any of these properties. I I feel like that's something I, I never really know what parents think about uh, with their kids. And, oh, I can introduce them to this character or something. Because if, if it's a vastly different character and it's a vastly different story, then what's the point of... Yeah, introducing them to this character because it's it might as well be a different show. So why would you get excited about introducing them to He Man if it's not it's it it's not like a faithful reboot to the original series or whatever. Like that could be fun if they go, oh, they're 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 updating the campiness and whatever, and they're doing something for uh, for kids. Uh, here is your generation's version of uh what i enjoyed as a kid this is um 
this is like a completely different, it looks like a completely different story and a completely different take, which just feels like then at that point, aren't you just watching a new show? Like, I mean, I guess it's called He-Man. So I guess maybe there's a part of the brain that is feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm sharing this. Uh, like we're both enjoying something called He-Man, but yeah. is it, but I, do you I, really get enjoyment out of I, like? I is, think it might be out of the their curiosity, going like, "I really like this this cartoon. I want to see what are the origins of this cartoon." And and then you kind of dive into what your uh, your parents were into. I don't know. I, I you know, do you I, think I that works? Um, I don't know. I, I think. It, well, let's see. I'm trying to think of me for example. Like, uh, I like Speed Racer, and I remember my dad liking it, but I remember. It, uh, MTV just aired Speed Racer episodes, and I just I watched it, and I I, I convinced myself that it was great. <laughs> like I wonder if kids who watched I don't know the uh, the the new Spider Man, the Ultimate Spider Man, or or whatever um, series you know, cartoon, if they went back and watched Spider Man the animated series from the nineties. Do you know what I mean? Like if. I, I just don't know if that's a – you watch a new Batman series. Do you go back and watch Batman? I mean, maybe Batman the Animated Series. Maybe that's something that if you have a parent that grew up with Batman the Animated Series and you're enjoying anything Batman, they are going to force you to sit down and watch Batman the Animated <laughs> Series. Anyone who liked Batman the Animated Series uh, will force anyone that they come encounter <laughs> in contact with, you haven't seen Batman the Animated Series? Let me – send you my dissertation on yeah. why it is the greatest cartoon ever made. I I feel probably the same about the turtles that the new series, you could probably go back to a certain amount. And I think the movies, the original movies, I think would still hold up as enjoyment for kids. I don't know if the original cartoon would. I think, it, I think if the kids are very young, maybe because they're just trying to soak up, they're just, they're just going, this is more turtles. And it's kind of like how we watch cartoons from, you know, the twenties, thirties, forties, fifties. It didn't matter. It was just like, Oh, mine you know, they're cartoons. Seventies cartoons. When I was, I was just like, I can't, I can't watch any of this. I don't know if I still can. Well, that is another thing because the seventies, um, it, yeah, it is kind of funny. Uh, talking about the 70s in particular, if you think about filmmakers from the 70s, I actually just had a conversation about this. The, the filmmakers in the 70s and the pacing and everything. If you think about, they, let's say they were starting to make films in, are in their 30s, which means that they started watching things uh, back in the 40s. Or, or uh, depending on when in the 70s, if you're in your 30s, it's like, let's say, 40s, 50s, whatever. What are they watching <laughs> in the 50s as kids? And then mm. you think about what their parents were watching. And if their parents, it, sometimes, you know, kids, you know, you would just like watch a thing or listen to a thing like a radio, you know, uh, whatever your parents would want to listen to. Uh, maybe there wasn't as much kid content. And so what they end up doing is they end up doing like their own kind of thing. It's like a, an adult version of their own adult entertainment. They kind of get some adult entertainment when they're a kid. They grow up. They become more, you know, quote, adult. Uh, there's a bit of a pushback against it. Uh, in the 60s, you're, you're watching things in the late 50s and early 60s. Things become much more prevalent in entertainment. There's more things for kids. So then they grow up and boom, now we get the 80s. Just like the crazy people that are coming of age in the 80s, they actually had some children's content <laughs> when they were a kid. This is total hypothesis. But it's, I wonder if, because I'm seeing this now with our age group, and I know the type of entertainment that we absorbed. And it is so influencing the type of entertainment that is out there now. And it's almost like just trying to find anything we possibly can to retool uh, for like a younger generation. And sometimes you do a straight reboot. Sometimes you spit in the face of it. And sometimes you just do something completely different. You're just like, I'm just going to call it the name of this thing. But one way or another, everything is going to get remade because 
the best way that you can think how to connect with kids now is to connect with what you liked as a kid. And we have tons of entertainment <laughs> stuff to mine from because our generation was nothing but selling to kids. Yeah. So the only time, the only way that our generation can think about making content for kids is like, what did we like when we were kids? Uh, we'll just do that. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess they kind of did that in the eighties too, but they just made everyone babies. Sure. <laughs> and, and you know, with the uh, Warner Brothers cartoons, Disney cartoons, you ever hear them all saying, "We didn't make." cartoons for kids we made cartoons that we enjoyed that we liked that were appropriate for kids um it is a bit of a different mentality and i think there are people that are doing that now but there is a i think probably and i'm not saying the 80s just because that's like the thing to do is to talk about the 80s but the 80s were really super focused on like oh let's market to kids let's like really push entertainment for kids so maybe that's part of why we get all these things is because we grew up being the center of entertainment attention. Yeah. So when we think about making things for kids, we're just taking the stuff that we had liked earlier. And of course, Mattel is going to be producing these things because they know that there's some sort of market for it. But parents might not really... They want to connect with their kids in a different way, maybe, to sit down and watch the same entertainment, the same uh, same thing. And now it's like, well, let's make the things that the parents liked for nostalgia. They'll get excited to share the thing for the kids. But that's my point, is that at what point is this at all like He-Man? It's just to get the kids watching with the parents because that's a, that's a thing that they might want to do. Yeah. I don't really know how parents approach it. When you see something like this, do you think that you're going to get that kind of um, nostalgic kick? I don't think parents care. I think lonely <laughs> men in their you think, late you think 30s. Lonely, you think lonely men in their late 30s are going to watch He-Man and the Masters Universe, uh, uh, this children's uh, show? They're going to hate watch it. You think so? Yeah. Well, that I think that's few and far between, to be honest. I don't think very many people are going to uh, our age group are going to watch this. No. They might they might put it on to see like a, a an episode or two or a few episodes, but you really have to be starved for content, I think, to watch something so out of your age range. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I think a lot of people who actually, who make content like we're doing now is going to probably watch it and review it or talk about it, but. Right, I, but I do think because it's the He Man name, and if you were a He Man fan you, uh, back in the day, you're gonna people are gonna watch it, they're, they're, but they're not gonna be happy about it. Well, okay, I mean that. I guess that's the crux of it. I think it's. I think it's interesting. If you, I oh, just, did uh, you see the likes uh, and the dislikes of that video? Oh or? no, no. Uh, let me let me look that up right now. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> Oh, 5,000 likes and 11,000 dislikes. <laughs> so I think it's pretty obvious. That's, wow. Comments that's... are turned off. Now, I wonder, though, is that because it's, I think with YouTube kid videos, they like, like, uh, sure, like, sure, sure. That might be it. Yeah. Kid content is, uh, there's no comments a lot. So I don't know if that's yeah. because of. Listen, listen, this is a diverse group of kids. It is uh, got swords and and cool tech stuff and uh, Orko is a cute little robot now. I kind of like that. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. I'm I'm saying this in itself could have been a, a fun, <laughs> just a fun show. Uh, but you know, I I feel like it's um it's a good idea. It's a good premise it's uh you you got conflict that's merged into the thing you you have uh a, a, a group of friends and a, and a group of characters that seemingly all are capable and have different uh or, or different capabilities i guess i should say they're they're i don't think anyone has abilities other than the mechanical stuff that they have uh, i mean capabilities uh uh as as characters and then you have the classic good versus evil thing that I was saying 
that they did away with in the Masters of the Universe Revelation. And then in this one, it's it's back. I mean, clearly, there's a very clear bad guy here. Yeah. I think it's good, probably for kids. The trailer looks fine. It doesn't really look all that appealing to me. Again, not, not marketed uh, to me, but I can definitely see you know pulling back i can definitely see the uh the wheels turning you know the the uh the machine at work in in order to design the characters and make them look a certain way really really focus on visual effects there's a lot of visual effects work um in here i i think that that's something that really ups the production value of cg stuff is the effects work i mean it does for hand-drawn stuff as well but i think it'll be successful for kids and i think it'll run what two to five seasons and that'll yeah be and if you really like he-man then right around the corner might be one that you might like who knows uh you could probably do some of this if you are doing a three pronged attack you get the kids and you get uh kind of the the ya crowd with the kevin smith one and then you get a a more cinematic um, crowd you probably want to try to hit those three quadrants you know be a be a marvel movie uh get those uh get those parents get the uh get the 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 rebellious kids and college kids and then uh get the kids kids get that get that mar get that marvel money is i think what they're oh, <laughs> what yeah. they're trying to, trying to go for um i do find it interesting that they are doing this with he-man and not Shira, <laughs> because this actually would have been all I kept thinking about with this trailer. And this is my last thought. My, all I kept thinking about with this trailer was because there's all this machinery in it. You could have easily had this been He-Man and She-Ra, right? And the Masters of the Universe or something like that. Because because He-Man and the Masters of the Universe also is the name of the original series. So it just makes searching for it impossible anyway. But uh, you could have called it, I don't know, He-Man and She-Ra, right? You, and made a, a series for kids yeah. that had both of them and that they were dealing with magic and machinery and, you know, uh, it, it could have been, it could have been interesting. To pull both. So you have one that is on the Masters of the Universe side, you know, that had He-Man that was calling back. You have one that is She-Ra and, you know, all of the princesses of power. And then you have this one that kind of combines them uh, together. Then you do a movie. You do another movie. You get crossover movies. You know, you, you could have gone that route. Well, It's knows? just Maybe strange uh... that they kind of ignored the second thing for, for She-Ra. This one, th- this actually felt like this would have been perfect to have He-Man and She-Ra both in it. Maybe they might uh, make a She-Ra verse after this uh, is out and then merge well, If they do, together. if they do make a kind of companion series to this and make this one, you know, and, and have a She-Ra, then you can have the crossovers. You can have your Christmas special. You can have, your, but don't do Christmas special. But I mean, you can have that like, <laughs> you know, crossover. I, I was only thinking about it because of the mechanical part of it but if you wanted to do something like that you wanted to have some of the maybe you maybe you switch it up uh maybe you have uh, magic be the the main thing in the she-ra series and then the crossover is maybe one solution fixes the other you know like he-man is at a standstill with uh with skeletor and you know what i mean yeah I just want a Skeletor series. <laughs> a, a Skeletor series? Yeah. Could it be like uh like the the true story of the three little pigs like where it's from the uh the wolves point of view? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Where you kind of I mean that can, him. Uh, like well, like wicked. <laughs> <laughs> like he's not bad, he's just uh annoyed cuz it's face I mean, hurts. So yeah, I guess then you're. I mean, that's a very popular thing because we got Maleficent, we got Loki. Um, you know, Loki ripped someone's eyeball out, you know, and tried to take <laughs> over, tried to take over planet Earth. But somehow he's getting <laughs> re- rehabilitated in the in the eye because people just like like him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I don't know that you could do that with Hordak, but Skeletor, sure. Skeletor is. Uh, 
Skeletor is fun enough. So in this, uh, the <laughs> Kevin Smith one, they had uh, uh, Evil Lynn is a prominent character. Yeah. And I was thinking that. I didn't say that when we were talking, but I was thinking that like Evil Lynn, not a bad character to really focus on actually. Because even if you're talking the original series, I mean, sure, Evil Lynn was... Evil Lynn was always there. So there was Skeletor, but then Evil Lynn sometimes did feel like maybe Evil Lynn is significantly more powerful <laughs> than than Skeletor. You could have done something uh, something with that. Well, the opportunities are uh, endless in this Masters of the Universe universe. And I uh, look forward to the many more you? reboots. Do you do you look forward to many more reboots? Uh, Not at all. No. Okay. Uh, Yeah. Interesting. Interesting that they're going this route. I do want to see what they do with the uh, with the movie. I want to see what they do with the movie. Maybe it would be interesting. And I feel like uh, I I know they're they're talking about having the Rock play Black Adam. I don't know if they're going to go that route. If they don't go that route, I mean, man, having the rock be the He-Man alter ego of whoever Prince <laughs> Prince Adam is. Kevin uh, Hart as Prince Adam. Ke- <laughs> I mean, yeah, Kevin Hart and then he <laughs> turns into the rock. Uh, because uh, what I was thinking was that it was kind of fun with him being the strong man avatar of this scrawny little kid in uh, Jumanji. Yeah. Like, that was kind of fun. I mean, basically, just take the cast of Jumanji, right? I mean, you already got, <laughs> was it Gillian Jacobs as, uh, as Tila? And then. Uh, Ooh, Jack, uh, Jack, Jack. Jack Black Lucas. as Orko. <laughs> oh, okay. I was thinking he. Was You're thinking Cringer? Cringer? Yeah. Cringer? Sure, sure. Yeah, it could be Cringer. But I feel like the movie has got to be tongue in cheek. It's got, it has to be. You got to have your action. You got to have, but it has to be a tongue in cheek kind of thing. The Guardians I think of the Galaxy, kind of. It, no, actually, Thor Ragnarok is what I was thinking, uh, which would lead itself to if you need to find a Chris Hemsworth type, which is very difficult because I've I've said this about Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth is is too attractive for his own good because. <laughs> He's they're always going to try to put him like even early on, like they were putting him in these like uh, uh, these these roles, like the boyfriend or something like that. And then uh, then they put him as Thor and he's this action hero guy. Chris Hemsworth is really funny. And it's, you know, it's something that I've talked about before, but I think I think we we need to have we need to have some sort of benefit for just like painfully attractive people who are actually really funny and are missing their calling as a comedian, as like a comedic actor, because they're just too attractive. Well, I think I think it's safe it's to say, really unfortunate. Just add us to that list. I know, That's... Robbie, you're just you're too much. I just gotta be hunk. funny. <laughs> <laughs> why won't why won't anyone find you funny why does everyone take you so seriously as a uh, a it's, thirst trap they just look into my eyes and they just get lost and they you your know. your beady little eyes <laughs> <laughs> your beady little they look at eyes. these two buttons <laughs> these barney rubble eyes and <laughs> It's cool. I I actually kind of like that they are doing the uh, stuff with uh with that those properties, uh, She-Ra and He-Man. I feel like there is a lot more they could do with She-Ra if they're if they're willing to do two simultaneous properties with He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Uh, man, there's so much you could do with with She-Ra in the same vein, same idea. Same kind of uh, thing. You just have a bunch of characters and you have a land and you have a built-in conflict. You could just, it's almost like an experiment in how many different ways you can reinvent an idea. If you look at these two series, imagine just for a moment, someone came in with an original pitch for the concept of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe and two alternate paths one went the Kevin Smith way and one went this children animated series way. That's kind of what happens in series creation. You do a pitch, 
They like the idea. Yada, yada, yada. People are brought on board. You get studio notes. So let's make it, let's, let's make this more for this age group rather than this age group that you wrote it for or vice versa. Or, yeah, we like it, but we think that this, this He-Man avatar character who's just the can solve all problems like he's got to go maybe we have flashbacks you know that kind of thing it's it's funny to think about this is what happens in every studio development project every time you see a series that comes out it has gone through some sort of process and has turned into something i feel like these pitches were started off with all right hear me out and that's it (laughs) Yes. Uh, Also, just to clarify, I didn't mean that this actually started with a pitch. My point was to think about alternate alternate dimension of any show that had been pitched. (laughs) This is the kind of thing that happens. It happens with shows all the time. You pitch something that's for for an adult, and they say we don't we don't need a market for adults. We need a market for kids. Uh, we have too many, uh, boy led properties. Let's have, uh, let's change the, uh, the gender of the main character. Let's, uh, let's add in, uh, you know, some, uh, some older characters, guardian types and things like that. And then yada, yada, yada. It changes like the cast list, which changes the dynamic and then rewrites and rewrites and boom, then you get a show. But it's interesting to think about. I, I think that's kind of fun. Okay, back to your normal scheduled programming. Unless we cut this in at the end, in which case, bye. No, and don't let me see your mangy hide around here again. <laughs>